Hi, I'm Sigfix, and you might remember me from such classics as Bizarro Gate, The Dangerous Slater Saga, and Watch Me Piss on This Book. Did you know that one in five trolls go to bed hungry every night? But they don't have to. Not if you pick up the phone and make a pledge to sponsor a troll for as little as one flame war a month. Just pick up the phone and dial 1-800-LULZ. That's 1-800-LULZ. Let's end troll hunger once and for all. I don't have a ball to run. I'm telling you what. But these personal attacks have got to stop. You gotta stop! Make it money for what? I don't have any plans to develop that, you idiot. Daddy! 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 Listen, you sit down. You sit down. Hey, sir, you can go. He's the one that started it. Sit down. You shut up. Sit down. Don't disrespect me. Shut up. Sit down. Barry, can you ask him to move, please? We're asking questions. I want to ask Jeff Baldwin's response. You ain't got to do it, Barry. I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to be able to do it. Time out. I want to ask Jeff Baldwin's response. You ain't got to do it, Terry. Everybody listen, Daniel. We're not going to be able to do it. Oh, wait a minute. I do not hear it. Good evening, uh, Board of Trustees. My Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to address the people who may have got a publication in the mail today. This unlabeled, unsigned publication denigrates the entire Polish population in our township. To think someone would attack my family in this way is beyond my comprehension. If you want to print something about me, that's fair. I'm a public servant and I can take it. But you should leave my wife and my handicapped son out of it. As many of you know, I have a severely handicapped child. Something about me, that's fair. I'm a public servant and I can take it. But you should leave my wife and my handicapped son out of it. As many of you know, I have a severely handicapped child. He's now 47 years old. He was diagnosed with a brain tumor at age 13. My wife, Rosalie, and I decided at the time that we would care for him in our home. We've been doing so for the last 34 years. We certainly could have taken the option 
of allowing the state to care for him, but we decided to do it ourselves. After my wife Rosalie passed away in 2005, and certainly it could have been directly due to the extra labor that she put in on nursing this, this child. Monica came to my home to help with tennis. I learned to care for this woman and subsequently we got married. To call this Polish lady an illegal immigrant is beyond belief. Monica has spent many years in this country and was married to a hardworking Polish citizen who died from cancer. As a matter of fact, Monica still draws a survivor's pension from his death from the US government. And to label this Polish woman an illegal immigrant is beyond belief. Tonight, I'm not asking for your pity. I'm not asking for your vote. I'm asking for your prayers for Dennis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Filer. No, one other thing, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. It's not my dad. That the people who put this piece out, in my view, are sitting on this dais tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Filer. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm personally disgusted that someone would put out such garbage. It's clear that they've never met Monica. If they had, they would have seen how much, how much love she puts into taking care of Paul and Dennis. And they would never diminish her role as hired help. After I lost my own mother at age 62, um, which is about the same age as Paul's wife, Rosalie, my dad married Della. I was already married and never thought I'd find a mother in Della, but I did. And I don't think Paul ever expected to find a wife in Monica, but he did. Um, he found her as a wife because obviously of how caring she was and has such a caring spirit. To attack Paul's family, especially his wife and disabled son, with these shameful untruths is just the dirtiest of dirty politics. That's all I have to say. Thank you have you. a great fourth. Mrs. Manzella. Um, yes, I have a... Um, Ms. Ms. Chairman, no. excuse me, Ms. Manzella, if you will. There's one other piece that was put out by this crew also, and I want to reinforce this statement again. I believe the people who put out this piece of material are sitting on the dais tonight. I just want to make that clear to the people in the audience tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Manzel. Um, before I begin with my announcement, I, I, I had not have not seen this particular piece that Mr. Um, Fire speaking <laughs> about at this point, but um, I have seen other pieces and, you know, it's campaign season and um, I just would like to, to hope, you know, we live in a great community as, as Mr. Carabelli stated earlier, um, when the community comes together for fundraisers, such as for Cassie or for um, the Cancer Society or for Kiwanis, this, this community really comes together. And um, it, it is disenchanting and disheartening to see the negative campaigning that has gone on to this point. There's um, a month left and I, I hope it, uh, you know, discontinues. Um, it has not shown Shelby in a favorable light, and this has been going on for a month now, just now, not just today. So, you know, keep that in mind. Everybody running is is really um, community-minded and and uh, try and keep an uh, optimistic attitude. 
I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just have to respond to that. I, this shouldn't be a debate, but I just have to respond that I think that um, I think this attack was on a wife and a, and a disabled son in a personal situation and has nothing to do with somebody's record where when they were on the board or what they've done on the board. I mean, come and get it if someone wants to attack what I've done on the board. But for oh, Pete's sakes, this, leave my this, family alone. And this can't even be compared to anything else that I've seen at all. Okay, so, well, As I said, I have not seen the piece yet, but I agree with you. People's families and right. children um, should be off limits. Thank uh, you. You know, they we, they didn't jump into this fishbowl with us. Absolutely. So I, I agree with you there. Um, the only announcement I had was uh, regarding the um, fundraiser coming up. Um, HealthQuest is supporting um, the MISD Autism Program at Sequoia Elementary. And I know the principal was here earlier. I don't know if he has left the room yet. But uh, HealthQuest and, the Kiw and Shelby Daybreakers Kiwanis are uh, getting together for a golf outing on to the fundraisers for the Kiwanis Charities as well as the um, MISD room at Sequoia, Sequoia Elementary School. It's Saturday, July 19th. You can register to golf or to sponsor a hole at www.hqpt.com. Thank you. Clarence Cook, 50067 Chelmsford Court. I want to clear up what Mr. Vire aired in saying at the last meeting. Not only what Clarence Cook pays in taxes for his manufactured home, but what all 2,300 manufactured homeowners in three communities in Shelby Township pay. Mr. Vire said I only pay $3 in taxes. We, the 2,300 homeowners, pay what is called a vehicle registration fee of $3 a month, a fee. That is what Mr. Beyer meant to say. Where 50 cents a month goes to the township, 50 cents goes to the county, and $2 goes to the state school aid fund. Mr. Beyer's choice of comment to manufactured homeowners was a direct slap in the face to all the 23 homeowners and voters in our township. Manufactured homeowners through their rent payments each month pay their taxes to the community owners. This figure is based on the amount of land these homes are on in these communities. Community owners taxes are solely based on the land and buildings they're on. Also, we, the 23 homeowners, pay what is called a specific tax. Passed in a bill signed by John Engler in 2003, which means these homeowners pay an additional tax on their decks, carports, awnings, sheds, and garages in Shelby Township. I worked with Mr. Barra and Mr. Monchek from the assessing department. Also, Mr. Craig Cropo and Russell Matika from the Board of Review to help make the transition on this additional taxes more understandable here. President Bond Normal Home, Mr. Beyer, I'm quite familiar with this and so are the 2,300 homeowners who live and vote in our township. Are there any questions? I Mr. thank Mr. you. Chairman, if uh, Mr. Cook would allow me, I would like to respond to uh, so both what he said and what I said at the last meeting. Uh, I did say that Public Act 172 reads, each licensee shall collect and remit a specific tax of $3 per month. 
And I know well and good that the landowner who owns the mobile home park pays a tax. There's no question about it. However, Mr. Cook should also realize that you take 38 normal homes in Shelby Township, sitting on approximately 12 to 15 acres of property and compare that to the 115 acres that Mr. Cook is making reference to that has his 38 home sites sitting on 12 to 15 acres. And I'll give you the comparison between 38 homes, what they pay on 15 acres as opposed to 661 mobile home sites that sit on the area where Mr. Cook is referring to. The mobile home park pays $13,494 for police protection. 38 homes sitting on 15 acres pays $20,293. For fire protection, the mobile home park pays $11,381. And the, the 38 home sites pays $17,585. To the general fund, the mobile home park pays $4,122 and the 38 home sites pay 6,192. For county tax, mobile home park pays $16,233 and the 38 home sites pays 24,000. When you get to the school tax, it's a little closer between the 115 acres of which Mr. Cook refers to and the 15 acres which I'm referring to which has 38 home sites. The school tax for the mobile home park is 76,000 and the 38 home sites pay 77,000. So if you make a comparison between the mobile home park of 115 acres of 661 home sites against 38 home sites sitting on 12 to 15 acres for five taxing entities, the mobile home park pays 121,000 and the 38 home sites pays 145,000. That was the, the uh, statement that I intended to make, Mr. Cook. I apologize if I offended you. And I must say that Mr. Cook is correct. The going back to the Act 172 says the municipal treasurer shall credit the municipal general fund with 50 cents per trailer coach located within the municipality for taxes transmitted after June the 30th. The municipal treasurer shall transmit $2 for each trailer coach parked in the municipality to the state treasury for credit to the state school aid fund established by section so and so. Okay, Mr. Vice. I, I, I want to I say one thing very nicely. One thing, go ahead. That manufactured homes are not considered real property like site built homes are because they sit on someone else's land and we rent. Michael Ward, 56132 Parkview. Back in early August on election day, there was an incident that took place on the property of Mark Canari, who is on the list today. Mrs. Manzella was involved in an incident along with her husband and former Chief Lehman's wife. The entire incident is on video. There's nothing missing. There's nothing absent. It's all on the videotape. Uh, it, it, the results of that all, first of all, which is absolutely shocking to me and I've had numerous people I run into in the township was, it's clearly on their assault, trespassing, destruction of property, theft. It all took place on his property. He got those signs and things legally. He painted them. There was a paint can kicked over his lawn. Two, a day or two later, he woke up in the morning. There were nails down his entire driveway. Who threw those? Who knows? The next day, his wife comes home in the afternoon with the kids in the car, and there's something with batteries and, and wiring on it made to look like a bomb. I guess someone doesn't like him. I might recall a Facebook posting I saw. Mrs. Mantell actually posted something about it, and I'm going to paraphrase it. It's a shame it's not like the good old days when you have a problem with somebody, you just take them out. And I can produce that document for anybody that would be interested in seeing it. What astounds me is our chief of police and Sergeant Daniels, who was the officer involved, he took original set of documents the day of the incident and 10 days later requested a second set. Matt's documents document from the FOIA request, which I have, by the way, 
did not include both sets of documents. Where's the missing set of documents? What is Sergeant Daniels doing? Let's pick and choose what we want. They relied solely on one woman, as I, as I was told by Matt, a screaming woman in a red pickup truck that came running up, said, I saw it all, and I saw Matt attack Lehman's wife. Well, the problem is she didn't write that up in her police report at all. There was a, a battle for a sign is all, nothing about a fight or whatever else. When we do find out who she is through legal channels, we're going to make every intention to make sure that she gets properly prosecuted for, for falsifying a document. That is illegal to file a false report like that. And the fact is the videotape has the entire incident on it. All you residents watch it. Why was uh, Marina, who left earlier, I'm sorry she's not here today, why was she not brought in as a witness? She took the video of the whole stupid thing. You're talking about she, Marina from the patch? From the crotch hill. She was never consulted. Next door neighbor, who may or may not have videoed up, he was never talked to. But some screaming lady was enough for what was the recommendation from Top Sergeant Daniels and our chief, I might add. And I know it because I talked to him about it. Well, we recommended that Matt be prosecuted for assault and the other three for trespassing. What is going on in our police department? I challenge every resident in this township to watch that video and you got to be insane if you see it any other way. And if you don't, what plan are you from? Some friends of mine, we, we suggested passing a hat, collecting up money, and we'll send, collect it all up, send it to Sergeant Daniels, and let him get an eye examination and maybe a hearing test as well. Because for what I saw in those documents and what I read was an atrocity. Uh, I could not believe it. Yes, he is being followed. And let me serve notice on it. You're going to get caught on video doing it. He was followed all the way to Auburn Hills with a Shelby Township police officer with it on the side of the car. There's no question it happened. His wife followed the other way. What's going to be next? Are they going to put a real bomb in his mailbox? Are they throw more nails in his driveway? These are facts. These are the things that happen. These are in the police report. Putting out a posting on Facebook, it's a shame it's not the good old days. What kind of world do we live in? I can't believe it. And I have that listing, and I thought, and then the police have the audacity to file that? What are you doing, protecting Lehman's wife because he's a former, a former chief? I can't remember. I, I, I can't think but uh, back to one of the things on his review, why he wasn't his contract wasn't renewed. He had failed to file the proper paperwork within the proper time for one of his officers whose gun had discharged during off-duty. There's a procedure and a policy and written documents that had to be filed. He failed to do that in the adequate time window. And guess what? There was no action taken against the officer. How do you explain that? Who is running the show around here? I was disgusted, as were many, many of my friends. My best friend is an attorney down in Kentucky. They're practicing law many years. He reviewed it and said, you got to be kidding. He said, this is a lawyer's dream. It's on videotape. It's there. There's nothing missing. It's all on the videotape. So my question to all of you is, and I challenge every resident, pick the phone up, call 731-2121, ask for Sergeant Daniels, and you ask him for an explanation. His last message to me was, well, put a FOIA request in for the documents. And that was the end of it. He doesn't want to hear from me. Why? You know, prior to my little battle with Mr. Manziel about two weeks before, somebody tried to bust into my mailbox week and a half, two weeks before. Gee, I wonder, police report, what do they do? Nothing. What is our police is, report doing? How do you bust into someone's mailbox? What does it even mean? Nothing. You know, explain it to me. I don't understand it. I've been, you know, this this whole situation, I know people that have come to the meetings. Mr. Turner was blocked out of the doorway trying to come back into one of the meetings a while back. This is how we run the show. I had Nick stand over the top of him with his fist in the back corner of the room with our, was then captain here, an officer sitting over there, and nobody saw the incident except Mr. Flynn and Mr. Wozniak. You know what was done with it? Zero. I get a smart Alec comment from the police officer that investigated it. Who is running the show around here? Who is being held accountable? We got a real problem. Well, to answer your question, I'm, I am on a hook for everything that happens around here, and any uh, resident that has any questions, please come to me. You know where my office is, and I will be more than happy to sit down and uh, listen to the uh, facts and uh, act accordingly. As far as anyone coming into this meeting, if um, someone is not allowed or having a problem getting through those doors, all you need to do is let me know about it and I will handle it. Any other questions? or any Chairman, other? that, that yes. is a very serious charge. Yes, it is. And I think the police department should be held accountable to make it known to the residents of this township what is in fact going on. Because that video is very plain as to what it shows and these accusations are very strong and somebody should be held accountable for this thank you okay thank mr. you mr chairman i have a comment regarding that too hold on, hold on. switch the case okay um i had boy the uh quest of the audio 911 tape and 
And that is, I think, is a little bit clearer as to what really went on at that uh, scene. But not only did I FOIA that, I just received it. Haven't been able to listen to it yet. So I called the police because our signs were being defaced, not because anything else was going on, because at that point, nothing was going on. Pulled up the plat map of Mr. Gennari's property and the possibility of facing trespassing charges, and there was no trespassing. Um, I have copies of the plat map here if anybody wants to see it. That's a vacated alley. Uh, doesn't even have anything to do with Mr. Gennari's legal description. Um, he may have an easement to his property on it, but it wasn't recorded. He's not paying taxes on it. So there's a different way to look at both of them. Mr. Um, Ward, I don't know why this is, you got a dog in this fight again. Um, you've got a habit of um, lying about me, and that certainly hasn't changed. Um, if uh, Mr. Canary or you have any questions, um, you know how to find me. I do not believe for one minute that Mr. Gennari is being followed. Um, you know darn well I didn't mess with your mailbox. I didn't mess with Mr. Gennari's driveway. These kind of accusations are nothing more than lies. They're slanderous and malicious. I thought you learned your lesson last time we went through this. My advice to you would be stay away from me and your comments should be kept to yourself. And you can tell your friend that too. And it's okay. uh, Pastor, did you want to go up? Uh, Matthew Guinea, 8800 Wilson Street, Shelby Township, Michigan. My question is, is if we don't build the building and we take the 0.226 mills from the police fund to the general fund, would that make us solvent past 2013? Is there any scenario on that? No. It won't make us solvent then either? Either way, we're going to be in. in the, oh, I want to ask, do you guys um, recycle your plastic yeah, water bottles? That didn't make sense, Mr. Kayser. If we don't build the building and we take the 2.226 or whatever the Yeah, the whatever the mills, mills are and put them in the general fund. From the police fund. You're saying that that's still, we'd still be in the red in five years? The 0.226 is not a sufficient number the, the, to cover. So you know, no matter what you're Ms. Chairman, Ms. Chairman, you know, Chairman, to clarify, Ms. Kayser, real quick. I think what Mrs. Cole was getting at and the gentleman was speaking. Hold on, sir. Oh. I think were you asking that if they didn't build the building, you took the funds of they built that building and put it into the general fund, would it make it all right? Is that what you're basically asking? Um, one of his scenarios, one of his scenarios was that you take um we have one point two two six, I think, uh, mills for the police and one one mill for the general fund. I was saying if we took the point two two six from the police fund now put it in a general fund, would that make us solvent and then keep the police kind of, you can say they didn't build a building at all, but we, and didn't have to tax increase, but we shifted it anyways. Cause he was saying, if we build the building, shift the taxes, we're still in trouble. Well, what if we don't build the building, shift the taxes anyways, we're still in trouble. So we're in trouble no matter how you look at it is what he's saying. The general fund presents a unique challenge. It always has. What we're looking at is whether the construction of the building has a benefit to, to build a building now or later, or not at all. He's looked at the financial analysis. Come on down. Okay. Thomas Turner. Are you referring to the phone in the cells in a, in a jail cell? That and then something else. 
the kickbacks that are getting from Nightingale here for the tolls. And speaking of Nightingale, there was a there was an accident that uh, involved a motorcycle on October 28th, where the police were called and the motorcycle driver was injured pretty badly. He had to be hauled away in the ambulance unconscious. The police called Nightingale to tow the motorcycle away. They charged that poor man $165 to tow that motorcycle away. In his proposal for the contract that uh, Nightingale proposed to tow motorcycles, he quotes a price to tow a motorcycle for $75. But now that he's not under contract, he's not under obligation to the township, he's able to charge whatever figure he wants without any explanations to the township. And I think he owes this motorcycle driver at least $90. And uh, I would like you to keep that in consideration when it comes time to pick a towing company, and I urge you to do it soon. And why are the police in the habit of calling Nightingale to tow a motorcycle or any other accident? Why didn't the police department call Utica Shelby Towing over there that, was, uh, that got the contract in the first place? They have equipment to tow a motorcycle. They have equipment to tow, tow a car. Why aren't they given a chance to tow? Why are we always calling Nightingale? In the last bill once, we paid Nightingale almost $10,000 for an auto auction sale. Is there any wonder why they're fighting so hard to get a contract from you? Look at all the money they're making off this township, and they're not even doing the people who need them a service by outrageously gouging them for the price of towing. Okay. Thank you. Nick Nightingale, um, you know, once again, we got Mr. Turner coming up here and talking uh, untruthful things. Um, I truly don't understand it. I don't know what me, my family, or anybody has done to this gentleman. Um, he's made numerous statements today. And, you know, in the past, I've watched on TV. I say, you know, maybe Mr. Turner has a point. Maybe he has a point. But then, like today, he, he brings up that there were two firefighters shopping for one firefighter's family. Did you, did you approach the firefighters? Did you ask? It kind of sounds strange anyways that you'd have two firefighters actually shopping for one family. And he's absolutely incorrect about every single statement that he's made about Nightingales. The township, the taxpayers did not pay one nickel from that auction. Actually, that is money that has been, uh, those are fees that have already been put in place. Actually, I believe the township makes a profit on the auctions, every auction that there actually is. So that, that ain't actually tax dollars going towards us. Um, you know, I don't know how many times I can come up here and actually say it. If you'd like an answer to something, you know, just like the supervisor said today, bring it to my attention beforehand. I can actually research it. I can give you answers. Um, I, I don't know where this comes from. I, I haven't talked to Mr. Turner. He hasn't contacted me. And, and I'm truly disappointed with every time. I, I don't know what we've done to him. To actually come up here and, and come up with blatant lies against me and my family. It's lying. rude. It's disrespectful. No, Where's okay, your bill? Not. Bring it up. Here. Let's let's okay. have a discussion okay. about it's it. Not, no, please, Mr. Nightingale. You are. Please address the board. You are. I, I'm seeing it. Please address the board. No, the, the not him. Okay. People in the address podium the are, are back there bashing me, and that's actually Mr. Turner. But I, I don't understand it. I mean, okay. I'd really appreciate if he could actually give us a, an example. Or, or give some sort of facts. I mean, he doesn't research his information. It, it's poorly displayed. Just like him complaining about kickbacks for calls while he's made being detained by the Shelby Township Police Department. Look into it. Collect calls cost about the same as when you were arrested and you were sitting inside that cell calling for somebody to come and bail you out. I, it, it makes no sense. He says that he's looking out for taxpayer dollars. How's that not looking out for taxpayer dollars? He talks out of both sides of his mouth, and I don't appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. How you doing, Neil Nightingale? So let me get this right. Someone is complaining about a $6 charge, and they <laughs> go into another resident's house and slap a female in that person's house. So you so then you want to come up about. so that person wants to come up here and complain about a six dollar charge because they got arrested for slapping a female. 
let's not go there. Uh, okay. What what would you? Is that it? Yep. Thank you. It. Okay. So what I need to know is if I have a glass of wine with all the residents, because it's an AGM, and some cheese, am I breaking policy number one? Uh, through the chair, I could, the best answer I could, could provide to you would be, based on a recommendation on fit for work, would be it depends. It's, it's an individual responsibility to ensure that whatever they're doing does not impede their ability to do their work. And, and, that's, and that's who would decide that? similar to what we have in our employee So policy. who would decide that? At that dysfunction, who would make that decision? Uh, at the council level, I'm assuming it would be a decision that's made by your peers. Wow. Okay. Thank you. We work nights, weekends. The worship said that Christmas time. You know, I'm I'm glad that he doesn't drink just like me, so he doesn't have to face this kind of issue. But uh, uh, I just want to stated that very clearly a city council in this, our office we do not have any wild party we are talking about a respectful workplace policy and what we described as systemic issue and you have mostly men in position of power and you have uh, women in supporting roles and you add alcohol into that mix. <laughs> Councillor Sutherland, you're the last person to say to a council member, don't let your council let her finish. And it's it's no coincidence that the two member the two women members of council are the ones who are advocating for this policy. So um the point of the fact that the, the council so, excuse me, as a very correction. The majority of council approved the proceeding with this notice of motion. It 13, was not two members. Thirteen to two is matter okay, of fact. Well, we'll see so how please it correct the record, today. Councillor Farrar. They're making a lot of assumptions. We're silent on this issue of yeah. can you drink? You know, can you get lotto at a community association event? Um, and this would actually say you can't. There's no way of enforcing it. But like much code of conduct stuff, you know, it would actually make a statement. I have received multiple complaints about members of council who have gotten water at community events. And yes, there have been wild parties during during working hours. There have been. And I've, I've been on council for a few terms. Um, and there is no mechanism to complain. It's not an easy thing for me to talk about, frankly. But I'm very glad we're having this discussion today. And I believe that we'll be a stronger council, ultimately, for it. I will support the recommendations. Thank you. I would like to know when is this a wild party? You mentioned it. If if it's such important things, I, I 
I really want to know why you didn't bring the issue up for how many years? How many years being on council? You could have bring to the council public. issue you're you're getting personal. Well, well, your worship, I'm sorry, but she started picking on me first. Councilor Chu, this is not a junior high school school. Okay. public you will follow procedure if not go to a class that teaches it to you understood i've had it wait your turn and respect each other and respect the people in that audience I still had to pull up your no you did not you he was talking and you interrupted, interrupted me. me i didn't see it that way well, that's and it's my idea. decision but that's, well, that's a wrong decision Gordon, i have the authority to end the meeting or have you dismissed for the evening Remember that. Okay? You should know how to do the job. I, Gordon, one more time. Go ahead, try me. Try you. Try you. What is the mayor? Let, let, let's just stop this. And, and, yeah, I, I, I didn't mean for a big argument to get started. I did have a floor and I was talking. I let Mr. Danny talk. Manager, um, stop me if you need to, but I continue to get calls <laughs> on, uh, yeah. uh, let's explain to the public this uh, procedure on the uh, $25,000 to Mr. McClure, uh, the lobbyist. I continue to get calls on it. I, yeah, I get questions mm -hmm. as to whether it was it's a political move or, or a legal move, and one reason I wanted to bring it up is I want people in District 5 to know that I opposed it. But I, I, I'd like a, an explanation to the public on how that $25,000 got approved. Mr. McClure is a former chairman of the Republican Party in the state. He's a lobbyist registered with the Brooks Pierce law firm in uh, both Raleigh. He serves in the Raleigh office as a profession, non-attorney professional. He uh, uh, is under contract with the city to uh, lobby on behalf of what the uh, consensus of council regarding Senate Bill 36. It is a service contract that does not require to be bid under um, state law. It is under $30,000, which is does not require uh, uh, further vetting for it to be signed and the manager executed an, under his inherent authority. I did call council members, uh, including you. Right. Yeah. You did not support the matter. Right. Thank and you. Um, uh, there was a consensus to go forward. I think this could uh, very well be an election issue, and I would like for you to disclose who who gave you the authority. Who gave you to who gave you the authority to spend the twenty five thousand dollars? City council has given me the authority to. I know you. I know you can. I'm happy to jump in here. Uh -huh. We desperately need a lobbyist. If you need a scapegoat, paying the camera in, $25,000 is a bargain because if we could pay more and get those knotheads in Raleigh to make a correct decision, but, I'd pay but, it but, in a heartbeat. But wouldn't our... We desperate, our cities are around the state are being attacked. We're going to lose potentially $10 million dollars. So for us to send someone to Raleigh to represent us is a one of the wisest moves we've ever made. I don't believe this had anything to do with the 10,000. This was just SB 36, right? Okay. This had nothing to do with the $10 million. Will we be asking the lobbyists to advocate for anything that might be detrimental to the city of Greensboro? Are they available to us? Should we need any additional assistance on matters? upon uh, consensus of council, we can certainly ask. Right. Should, so we've we? developed a relationship with a lobbyist in a legislature that has not only made our state the laughing stock of the United States, but is attacking the large cities within that state. Well, I'm glad I gave you that uh, platform, Mr. Barber, but uh, shouldn't our... Well, city then I should continue, should I? <laughs> Keep on. Okay. Shouldn't our city attorney and our mayor uh, do, do that lobbying? 
I mean, why do we, why do we well, need I to spend you, you, 20, The mayor doesn't even 000, have a vote. $25,000. You, know, you don't want the mayor money. to vote. Why should the mayor have the ability to lobby? $25,000 of taxpayer money. And I want you to just be clear, transparent. I, I know you have the authority, but do you, is, is this your decision or did you get, did you poll council? Yes, he's I move that we have a lobbyist in Raleigh. Is anybody with me? Okay, all in favor, please raise your hand if you think we ought to have a lobbyist. There you go, Tone. Look, Tone. You don't even have to ask him again. Look, we all got our arms up. Did you poll individual council members? I already said yes. Poll us. I'm saying then. I'm saying before you decided to spend. Can we have a phone? Did you poll individual council members? He already said yes. Individual council members. Yes, he did. Called me, and I said yes. Was it was it eight to one then? Because I know I opposed it. So let's count now. So it was eight to one. I'm it sure. Eight to one. Stay with it. Now doesn't count, Mike. He Ooh. already said. Now he doesn't did. count. All right. When you called me, I said yes. Does that okay. count? Okay. Okay. Yes. So my so, arms up. So was it eight to one? <laughs> when you polled individual council members, there w there was clearly a consensus. Uh, uh, there Tom, was, can you say eight to one? Move to adjourn. Can you say Second. Eight to, can you say I, eight there's to a motion one. on the floor. No, yes. let Tom speak because this is just too far. And I mean, there, we, there we, was one clear no. Okay. There was one. The one clear no being me. And uh, there was uh, one concern over the amount that the city would spend and wanted it. Uh, there were two concerns over the amount the city would spend and wanted uh, directed my office to go back and try to make the most efficient contract possible. Uh, there was uh, one council person I was unable to reach, but I left a message. And um, then uh, in my recollection, uh, which I did not take notes of, every other uh, person was an affirmative to a very strong firm. And, and what have we got for this $25,000? What, uh, what do we expect and what do we have at this point? We have uh, two lobbyists in Raleigh walking the aisles, talking to members of the House <coughs> regarding the position of the city of Greensboro. And is there anybody in this room that thinks that's going to change one vote? May have already, hopefully. No, you got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, at least it might get the refer referendum on there, which you absolutely voted for, Mr. Wilkins. Yes, yes, I did. But do you okay. think that that twenty-five thousand dollars is going to add a referendum to it? It I may. It may. So. It I looks like it's going it, that I, way. I think you've made it very clear and transparent uh, what took place. Uh, I think it's an absolute shame that we would spend twenty-five thousand dollars of taxpayer money on a political issue that was not a bill that passed. That wasn't a legal issue. What's the cost of the international restaurant sign? Same amount. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll move we get rid of the lobbyist if we kill that international restaurant. It's been two meetings. A second. Okay. Ooh. It's been two oh, meetings. Oh, man. All right. Doesn't matter. Two meetings. Actually, council can bring up an item. How much does that there. international restaurant roll cost? What's that going to cost us? How, How much does that cost? What's Tony's boondoggle uh, ways and means project going to cost us? How about <coughs> we, we, City that Boulevard. Liberal, what is that liberal restaurant program going to cost us? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Second. I mean, we've got three motions on the floor, Madam Mayor. Uh, and I think they all mean go home. I, I think, <laughs> my turn for comments. I think you were very clear on the process. Thank you very much. And that's what I wanted to get clear. We're glad you agree. Tom, you did a much better job with the answer than Tony did with the question. <laughs> <laughs>
After all, my oath has no expiration date. I count my friends as the millions of fellow North Carolinians who own firearms and the 650,000 of us who possess a valid concealed carry permit. Certain members of this council apparently hold an opposite and hypocritical view of the constitutional rights I cherish. I remember when several current members present here today displayed your collective disdain and contempt for the rule of law pertaining to the citizen's right to bear arms. At that time, the matter before this council was regulating firearms in public parks. As I recall, these members spoke with vitriol and contempt and to that night voted against the ordinance, adamantly remarking they would not accept it despite the law mandating it be so. Recently, Mrs. Mayor, you made clear your desire, if only you were dictator and not subject to law, to maliciously shut down a profitable recurring exhibitor to the otherwise unprofitable Greensboro City Coliseum. Your, col your comments, mutually supported by other members of this council, continued until the city attorney brought you all back to our real world. The mayor is not a dictator. The city council cannot throw out an exhibitor because it does not like the product or the purpose of an event. This mayor and this council, once again, must obey the law. Manager, um, M Madam Mayor, I have a question before we start on the agenda, please. Yes. Uh, my question is directed to the uh, city manager and city attorney. If you've got a copy of our agenda there in front of you. If you'll scroll down to items, uh, uh, the item for three hundred thousand uh, dollars to assist in the stabilization and renovation of the Cascade Saloon, and if you'll scroll down to the resolution to oppose House Bill Two, uh, my question is, how did these items get on our agenda without going through committee? Uh, the item, and I'll, I'll address specifically the items um, 13 and 14 related to the Cascade Saloon, like we traditionally do with matters that come before city council uh, related to economic development and specific closed sessions of council. Uh, if you recall, um, council heard this proposal in closed session. I, I recall uh, seven of us being in a closed session, but that doesn't address the uh, item going through committee as it should. Well, traditionally by practice, we brought those items directly to council. Uh, they've not gone through committees once they've Is been anybody else aware of that, Mr. Fox, Mr. Barr, anybody aware that these items don't go through committee? Mm -hmm. They they do not go through mm -hmm. committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, address the resolution uh, to oppose House Bill 2, please, being on the agenda without going through committee. Um, after the passage of the recent law by the General Assembly, I've been in contact with several council members, uh, including you, and I, uh, had, the mayor asked me to draft a resolution for consideration by council regarding uh, uh, the will of council and whether they would oppose this. and. Uh, she indicated that she felt it appropriate to be on this agenda, and I thought it was appropriate as well. So am I understanding you then, the mayor has the authority to put something on the agenda without mm -hmm. going through yep. um, committee? Do any of the other of us uh, have that uh, authority? I would believe that you have the exact same authority yes. on a political matter that does not involve expenditure of funds, and, yes. And, and do you believe that to be ethical? I think that it is... Uh, if you're asking, is it ethical not to go through the committee? I do not th think that is an ethical issue. No. Okay. I would also point. I would also point out that I notified everybody on council as to my intentions, and they had the ability to object. Well, Madam Mayor, it doesn't give a good appearance uh, that we sit up here and you, uh, in an effort to uh, benefit your employer, uh, uh, break the rules that you actually voted for. You voted for the committee rules, and now you're breaking them. Uh, so I, I just don't think it looks good for us sitting up here to have a different set of rules for the mayor's downtown friends uh, and for her employers. Uh, I don't think that looks good for the rest of us sitting up here, and I want to make that clear. I, 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 would, also, I would also like to say that we used to have we have work sessions before council committees and many things were on the agenda that we did not put through work sessions
and uh, you are a mayor. I want to read one line from our city attorney. There remains many questions as to the full impact of this legislation. Uh, Mr. Carruthers, I couldn't agree more. And uh, you are a much smarter man than I am. And uh, t to me, that says a lot. And, I, and Betsy, I want it recorded in the minutes that I will be uh, voting against this resolution based on the bathroom portion. speculation and opinion is that motion was made as grounding an axe against one or two nonprofits. Absolutely not true. Well, Tony, I respectfully disagree because the minute I brought this up, you immediately identified the Civil Rights Museum and began to talk about their money and you put it in the context of the Civil Rights Museum. What I'm interested in doing is protecting all of the nonprofits that have excellent relationships do everything right, they provide the city with what we ask them for, and are excellent partners in our community. And what you're doing that you don't realize is you're standing in the way of these successful nonprofits continuing to assist the city because they're going to step away. I've already received emails today which prompted this. They ask for city transfer funds, and they will provide that information, then let them walk away. I ask for they're the providing the all salary information. They're providing audit and review. One year ago, I asked for this information, and I didn't get it then, and I'm not getting it now. It had nothing to do with the Civil Rights Museum. I asked for it a year ago. So you're saying that you asked for the top two salaries of every nonprofit? Don't make me use this. <laughs> uh, a, year ago, a year ago, I asked for that. I'm going in wrong. What would you know if you got it? Ha, <laughs> ha,